Good afternoon, everyone. I hope everyone had a wonderful week. We did as well. We had a few issues to deal with with my wife's medications, but we finally got it solved. I got to go back tomorrow and actually pick them up. But anyway, uh, sadly, my good friend uh, was admitted to the hospital for some unknown reason. He's a special needs guy, about 76 years old. And we go out together. We go to see air museums and things like that. He's crazy about aircraft and uh, especially the ones in World War II, World War One. He makes me drawings all the time. And again, yeah, I buy him lunch every once in a while and uh, come to find out he was actually hospitalized yesterday. So I'm hoping to hear something more. Maybe tomorrow we'll go visit him. My visiting hours are still sort of restricted in most hospitals. But anyway, welcome everyone. Uh, we have 23 people already on board. Um, this week was rather interesting. Uh, I was looking at my YouTube comments and also the Facebook comments, uh, trying to find out things about what people are having issues with that I can then discuss on the live stream and then possibly do videos during the week. And uh, yeah, it never it never ends. It's always interesting. Always people are having issues with this or that. And most of the time, it's a matter of just simply uh, checking something. And uh, uh, the problem is that uh, you need to know what to look for. Uh, and that's something they just don't tell you. Unless you have, say, like very um, advanced level service manuals that give you a better indication what some errors that you may see displayed either on your computer or your printer screen if it has one <clears throat> there's really no instruction book out there to walk you you know by the hand as to what to do in case this or that happens what they want you to do is just take it to a shop the thing is this day and age just like with automobiles you just replace the whole component you don't fix the component anymore so with printers it's just not worth it to replace a component that after labor costs and all of that is going to cost you as much as what the printer originally cost you so again it sounds horrible but that's the kind of world we live in now and so um waste pads yeah that's always an issue and um, we're going to talk about that as well but let's go ahead and welcome everyone we have 25 folks i have a about maybe 10 or 12 people on the chat right now. Those of you who may be here for the first time, I really encourage you to join us in the chat. Introduce yourself to the crowd here. And uh, some of these guys are here every Sunday uh, without fail. Uh, so tell us who you are. Where are you watching this from? And the best, of course, is tell us what you are interested in as far as printers this is a photo printing channel we cover all of the related uh, subjects to that you know main uh, subject photo printing but you know just tell us what you're interested in tell us what printer you already own or wish to own or are looking to own there's some people on the fence right now as i speak uh, trying to come up with a reason to buy this printer over that printer and it's a matter of doing your research and just basically finding out what your needs are when you do your research and you, you're looking at a printer don't be enamored by the printer look for a printer that will fulfill your specific needs and maybe a little bit more because as you get really good at this you're going to want to expand your horizons i guess and maybe do something a little larger uh do something with a better color gamut therefore you're gonna need more colors in your ink palette that sort of thing all right so nigel waters is here you had an issue you you uh basically you um messaged me uh, i think it was last week and i never got back to you but i'm, I'm glad you solved it because here you are with us um so any anyway welcome back can pro 300 with OEM inks, you image a color monkey, and color 2000, Canon 2000D camera, 
And of course, he's from Wales, UK. Edwin, West Coast, California. Pro 300, refilling with PCSC. I, I grew up in LA, right, right down the hill from uh, Dodger Stadium across, I believe it was I-5, a uh, little area called um, Elysian Valley. And I went to the local high school, which was John Marshall High School, which is used for a lot of movies. I think this is such a, such a beautiful school. Looks very Eastern type um, architecture. Martin van Gogh from the Netherlands. He's got a P900 OEM inks and Ilford papers. Ilford, you know, every time I see that, I just think back my teenage years in LA, and I'm talking like age 12 through the point where I went into the army in 68. Um, I used to go to a local place called Freestyle, and that was located right on Hollywood Boulevard in Hollywood. And I would have to go up my road and then make a left, make a right, take Las Feliz Boulevard, go all the way to the, uh, I think it was the Sacred, Sacred, um, yeah, Sacred Cross Academy. And then that was the end of Hollywood Boulevard beginning going down and right there, about three blocks down, it was Freestyle. And Freestyle in the 60s was the go-to place for photographic supplies. I'm talking darkroom supplies. And Ilford at that time was one of the, besides Kodak, was one of the top. And Seagull, a company called Seagull, was one of the top providers of photographic lab-type papers, silver-based papers. Gosh, yeah, those were the days. For twenty bucks, I could I could come home with a box or two of paper, which was really amazing back in even back in those days. I'm sorry. Wait a minute. Photo Nikon 780. I got it right this time. Edmonton, Canada. Several Epson photo printers. Canon for 1000 PS6. I am on PS 25.2. We're gonna go show you later on a new application that I found that at this point is in beta form so everything is free and it's a generative type software I'm into that now generating different images because I want to be able to do things that I normally I'm not a big artist I'm not a great art. yes I oil paint and do some of that but it was more of the realistic type painting this is more graphic oriented uh, generations of images that you can create with it. We'll take a look at that a little bit later today. So he's got a Canon Pro 1000 piece PS6, Lightroom Capture One, Photo Lab 7. That's something I don't know what that is. ON1 and Nikon D800 and a Sony A6500. Response from Drew, H oh, okay, from Drew Hendricks about affiliate link. I'll check on Jose's affiliate account and links. I have not heard from him lately. That's not true. I did contact him, but I never got a reply. And I assume all is well. Yeah. It's just that I, we were supposed to, we meaning the channel and I, were supposed to be getting like a 5% of all sales generated through those links. Zero has shown up on my little portal, if you will. And so I thought maybe something is wrong because they had some issues generating the links. They gave me a couple of versions of those links. And finally, the last ones that I provided for you guys supposedly were the ones that worked. And again, as tested by them, supposedly. Emmanuel from France, Rouen, uh, P300 ink out migrating through Octo Ink in Great Britain, and uh, an OEM red and CO profiling with Color Monkey and Data Color Probes, printing with QMH1. Hello, everyone. 6 p.m. in Normandy. Yeah, we, since you all are here, of course, you did the right thing and you put back your clock one hour last night. You have no idea what a chore that is. 
in this dwelling of mine. 47 clocks. It's the German side of my wife. She loves clocks. I love clocks as well. Maybe it's the, my European uh, side as well. We cannot turn down a clock offer by anyone. And I have some that I have not even wound up for half a year because I just can't keep up with them. So last night was a lot of fun. We did all the major ones, the ones we normally see. And of course, all the automated ones like the computers and my phones and, and, and so forth. You know, cable boxes, they set themselves automatically after. I think it's like 2 o'clock a.m. Like this morning, they go back one hour. But anyway, I'm glad that everyone is here on time. Harold Goldberg, he is from Richmond, Virginia. Pro 100, PCSE, Inks, Cumish Ultimate Lifetime, Rick Johnson's Clean Cards and Rudy's Holders, and Lightroom, and he's got a clock P600. Yeah, so that's going to take a little bit of work. Um, it's not one of the easiest Epson printers to unclog when it happens. Uh, I hope your, your black ink switch valve is still working. That's always an issue with those printers. My R3000, which is the predecessor of the newer P600, only prints on matte, and I haven't really used it for such a long time. I'm going to have to do a massive cleaning and maybe a, uh, a refurbishing of it to get it back online again. Um, yeah, wish me luck on that one. Charlie Miller, hello guys, watching from Toronto, printing on the XP15000 using PSC. PC inks, old Nikon glass on film and digital, awesome. Very good. MP Talk One, cannot get QImage Pro to auto print on clock job, really. Um, have, you, have you set up your scheduler? You have to leave it on. Okay, the, the program has to be not closed down, but when you click on the little X to close it down, do not close it, minimize it. And that way it's always active, but just sort of down in the, uh, the lower right corner somewhere. And that will allow you to just then, you know, go to bed and it'll, it will run that, that, uh, that print, in other words. Um, you have to tell it to do it at a specific time. That way you're not working at the same time as trying to print. And uh, it should work. That's the only reason I can come up with that uh, it has not worked for you. Um, I, every once in a while, I'll do a manual one just for fun, just to make sure that everything is working, especially on something like the Pro 1000 that needs needs to be woked up, woken up often, like every 23 hours or so. So that it will just not run those those long uh, preprint maintenance uh, cycles and such. Tom Altman never could get my Canon Pro 100 to work on my Mac Mini M, considering sure color 900P. Okay, that's an oh okay that's that's the uh, Pro. The P900, trying to watch reviews. Hope it works for M1. I don't know what the issue there might be. Um, I don't want to, you know, upset Mac owners, but according to what is his name, um, the creator of QImage One for Mac, he's a member of the Apple developmental team, so he's involved in in all of these aspects, you know, uh, coding, programming, that sort of thing. And he just out, outright, he just says that it's just not one of the top issues, one of the top priorities. And for that reason, uh, often after updating a major update, um, you lose certain features and you have to reinstall them and such. So again, this is coming from him. I'm not, you know, it's not me being political here. No. Um, you know, again, this should not happen. It should not happen. It should show up. Just make sure that you are installing the actual Canon driver and not 
just simply plugging it in your Mac and letting the so-called AirPrint driver be installed. That is just a, a generic one. And we're going to talk about that because I'm going to give you a little history about me and how I became a Windows user as opposed to Mac because I work. We use exclusively Mac computers because all of our software, which was a um, scientific type software, analytical software, was all Mac. And then the government, they use Windows for all your regular, uh, you know, word processing and all of that stuff. Did we have internet? Not on those early days yet. Okay, so, yeah. Once I got started and, you know, my curiosity about digital printing increased, which is I really hated it initially, um, I got involved with uh, more with window computers concerning printing as opposed to a Mac computer for printing. It was wonderful for everything else, DNA analysis, everything, sequencing, you name it. Everything had to be done on a Mac. And, of course, no other computer could do it at that time. Uh, later on, in fact, even Photoshop, the original Photoshop that was released was for Apple only. They just really didn't think much about printing. And that's, that's an issue for us anyway. David Mayer, Mayer or Meyer, Mayer. I am with you again from downtown Silver Spring. Yes, I currently have an episode 8 code tag 8550 and may upgrade over the next year. What would you consider upgrading to? Um, gosh, if you're not displaying or well, not even displaying, wouldn't be too bad. If you're not selling um, like fine art prints and guaranteeing them to your customers that they will last 100 years under the proper conditions, really, there's no big, huge reason to have to upgrade to something like a Pro 1000 with 12 channels or a P900 with, or higher with the new 10 channel print heads, 10 channel color ink set. Yeah. In other words, going from a dye ink basic printer like that or like the 15,000 to a high level, high, high, you know, uh, pigment based printer, which is basically meant for your more expensive, more advanced uh, photographic media that are, they have coatings that are designed for pigment printing. In other words, uh, most of your resin coated, cheaper, uh, universal type papers, they come in glossy and luster, semi gloss, that type of thing, uh, are meant for your printer, such as the one behind me. So, you know, just think, think hard about that, whether you really need to go that, that way, unless you're going to uh, jump to save selling your work and providing the customer with a guarantee for longevity. I guarantee you that most people will not be able to see the difference unless you show them two of them. And they will be able to detect certain nuances between one printer and the other. Again, that's why they have different model printers so that you can make a choice. But I hope that, I, I wish, not hope, but I wish that you could go somewhere that sold printers and they would have calibrated sets of, of different models and you can then test to see, or at least go there to see samples of different printers, all of a standard image, for instance, printed correctly so that you, you get the maximum quality that particular model brand can provide you, and then you can make an intelligent decision. <clears throat> Your decision may be about what capacity do I need, not necessarily which is the best color output. Do I need to, do I have to have roll capacity? Do I have to have a roll unit on my printer, either built in or something that I can add down the road later on? Yeah, lots of things that you need to consider. Oh, wait a minute. So here's him. This is Henry Stoffel, Stoffel, a balmy, sunny Medford, Massachusetts, Epson P800. OEM Inc., Skewmage Ultimate. Everybody hit the like button. Yes, please do so. It helps, believe me. It does help. And I have noticed that, like right now, uh, what is it, the 5th of November? 
I have actually increased my daily earnings, which just absolutely plummeted to almost nothing just a couple of months ago. All of a sudden, like the beginning of September, like the end of August, I noticed, wait a minute, something weird is happening. And then September was just, you know, it's like, wow, I, I'm glad that I'm doing this because I love it. Okay. I'm glad that I'm not relying on this to make a living out of it like some people are. Um, it really, people need to consider other avenues for income when it comes to um, this type of public presentation on all of these different platforms. It, it's hard. And so, you know, uh, but then November came and I started seeing increases in the daily. So people are watching normally. They've been watching the same number of videos per day around the same but advertisers are actually putting in more ads so that helps that helps if you watch at least 20 seconds of an ad then i will get credit for that particular ad the full credit if you watch less than that especially the skippable ones where you can just skip it within five seconds not so good okay so if you want to help out you don't have to lift the finger just wait 20 seconds if it's a one minute ad, you don't want to watch the whole thing. Just wait 20 seconds and then skip it. And that will that will provide the channel the full credit for that ad, which is it's crazy the way the system works. Harold Davies from La Crosse, Wisconsin, Canon Pro 10, 2100 PCS CQ image, and still editing for one month long trip to French and Swiss Alps. Oh my goodness. Very interesting live stream with Mike. Thank you for all your info. Mike um, is going to be with us probably in a week or two. And he's going to have that individual that apparently he is an outright expert at fixing printers on his own. In other words, mechanical repairs. And so his thing is to buy used printers that are being sold on eBay and locally on Craigslist as barely used well that means fully ignored <laughs> and reviving reviving them and making them absolutely usable so it'll be really great to have that sort of education for especially me i need it to uh, show me what i need to do although i've been kind of lucky myself gordon kato or kato pro 100 et 8550 canon tc20 Q image on an MY Mac Mini. All right, and you're having no problems, I hope, right? You're just doing well with a Q image one. Q image one pretty much makes that combination bulletproof, okay? Because it's designed by a developer, okay? They, he knows what he's doing. He found some issues, yes, during his coding for that program. He found issues that were specific to you know who, and he repair them he fixed them he did what he had to do to make his program work flawlessly color management there's no issues people are having problems with what do i set my color sync to whatever you know i don't even know anything about that and he took care of all of that so it happens automatically you will not have double profiling issues even though apple is not supposed to double profile at all but some people were having magenta results which is usually due to double profiling in some kind of way uh, apparently, it can happen. So I'm glad that he has taken care of that because he's the guy that knows how to do it. All right? Whew. Yes. It should not happen. It shouldn't happen. Robert Green. Oh, come on, man. Again? You are awesome. You. What a supporter. Image Prograph GP4000. I have printed 35 photos, 30 by 40. Is that 144 inches by 60? Wow. That's that's great. By 60. Okay. I don't know. Oh, no, that's one. I'm sorry. One space, 44 by 60. Wow. Been a great printer. That's the 44. That's full capacity. Do I have this right? Let's see. The two... 2,100 is 24 inch. The 4,400 is 44, and the 6,000 and 6,100. There is a 6,100. That is a 64 with uh, printer. 
Mm. We're going to talk about these printers later on as well. Thank you, man. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Adrian Hylar, Hylar from Somerset, England. EcoTank 8550, Geomage Ultimate, Canon R5. I've been watching for over a year. First time live. Well, I'm glad to have you here. And I hope you enjoy the presentation today. I worked a little bit about it on it yesterday to figure out some fun things to show you guys. And I hope you enjoy it. And please come back every Sunday if you're able. I made it a little bit easier for Europeans because I don't want to keep you late on a Sunday night and you got to go to work Monday. So at least now it's a little bit a bit earlier, uh, one hour. And that gives me, when I get home from church, that gives me something like a half an hour to get prepped and eat a little bit of lunch before I come down. So one o'clock was a little bit too late. Adrian says, okay, that's Adrian. We got you. MP Talk 1, yes, I have. Yes, I have. What? Let's see. Did you did you post something earlier? Cannot get QMH Pro to auto print unclog. Okay. So you have tried that. Oh man. So I don't know what to tell you. Um most times Mike Cheney would be here and he could actually address that issue. I would suggest you go to the QMH forums. Either you're using um Which QMH are you using? The one for Windows or QMH1, which is for both Mac and Windows? Uh, each one is handled by a different person. So I would suggest you go to their, their um, they have forums and join them and then ask the question there and see if they have heard of the same issue from other users as well. Robert from Edmonton as well. Watching most Sundays, Christmas coming. Want to maybe play with chat GT for images suitable for cards. What is that? Using an XP15,000 XP Canon equipment, not too hyped on Photoshop. Okay. So that's another um, application that you can use. Okay. I'm, I'm not hyped on Photoshop either, but I. I'm a subscriber, so, and uh, as you can see, I have been making a lot of uh, little fun things lately with their their new AI uh, fill. Tom, Tim Miller, Louisiana, Pro 100 TM300, uh, PC Inks, Rick, Rick and Rudy's items, QMH1, Capture One, Pentax K, K1, and then, is that three? And Pentax 6x7 cameras. Wow. Awesome. I love that. Yes. Film, of course. Right? Richard Bender, Hagerstown, Maryland. And it's sunny there. It's sunny here, too. Wonderful. One wonderful day today. 67 degrees. Couldn't ask for better weather. Epson R3000 printing daily. DJI Air 2 drone. QMH Ultimate PC inks. Awesome. David Meyer, appreciate your thoughts and up, on upgrading or not. Yeah, we're going to be discussing that a little bit more in depth. Uh, I don't want to stay here three hours today, but I I will if I need to. David Meyer, uh, it's really amazing that you that we have to buy these machines sight unseen with no ability to compare. In the old days, when printers were coming out initially you were able to go to some of these places such as um, Best Buy here in the U.S. or at that time it was Comp USA, which became a micro center, or Walmart. Walmart was not really into having high-end photographic printers. They were more into your buy chip, buy chip, buy cheap, and then go broke buying ink type printers, you know, $75 for all in one printer. And then your inks will put you in the poorhouse. Um, you used to be able to go and test some of those earlier printers, but it still didn't really give you because you weren't printing from a computer. You were printing from a presses button. It was a, a wire hooked up to the printer 
and they would print some preset, whatever, you know, mostly on regular paper. The only suggestion I would have is if there happens to be a very high end photographic club in your neighborhood and they actually have premises where you can go in and, and print and join a, you know, chat with your friends and have meetings and that sort of thing. They may have printers you can compare, but it's not going to be, you know, 17 printers like I have. Okay. It's going to be maybe a couple of them, but that'll give you an idea of what is the best printer for you. At least, you know, as far as what your needs may be. Mike Slater, do you get some money for getting QMH from your links? Uh, yes, we get an affiliate um, payment. I don't know what it is exactly, but you get a 10% off from the full price. Especially, what's today? Wait, next week, Black Friday. I think next week, all week, it'll be their discount, and then you piggyback it with my discount. Okay? So take advantage of that. That only happens like, like twice a year, maybe around Christmas and during uh, Thanksgiving, Black Friday time so that'll be next week i just remember that so use my links it'll you know why not sure you're you're helping the channel indirectly but you're getting a 10 percent discount on top of their 10 percent discount stephen polvoy from toronto canada eco tank 70 77 50 85 50 hpz 9 9,000 something and making a few prints while we speak using my HP printing 12 by 18 on 16 by 20 cut paper. All right. Okay, so you're using Windows. Oh, okay. That's kind of odd. That is very odd. Um, go to the forum and ask them. There's got to be something about that. Let me see. You ask, yeah, I can, I can show you what you need to do. I think you, you have the program minimized, okay, and you that you actually see it's a little bit tricky when you set your schedule. You got to go through several steps to actually activate it, okay. I'll show you that. In fact, let's just do it now. This is this is too crucial. Let's just do it now. Let me open up QImage. And hopefully it will not crash me. QImage um, uses uh, your resources quite heavily. That's the only thing. Okay, so. Let me pop it over here a second. Boom. Okay. So you're going to go to File. Come on, cursor. File and then Print Schedule on Clog. And it has to show up here. If the job is not showing up here, then you did not complete the process. Okay. So I have one, two, three four or five jobs that I run every day. The scheduling, you do it here, Sunday, November 5th, 8 p.m. tonight, and every 23 hours, okay? And they have to show up here as well. So when you create it, you have to actually load it to this. Otherwise, it's just not going to print. It's like you stop maybe before, halfway before you finalized that. Okay. So give that a try and see if that helps. And if not, you can always contact uh, Q Image folks. They'll, they'll take care of you. I guarantee you. Okay.
Louis Murag or Murag did some darkroom printing yesterday, now doing some inkjet. I love both. So uh, I assume you have an, an enlarger. Uh, in my days, we used Dectal uh, paper developer, then a, what was it, like a 5% acetic acid stop bath, and then sodium diosulfate fixer. And then I used to run it through a hypo eliminator, which is a fixer. They call it hypo. And uh, that way, uh, it would actually allow the hypo to be removed a lot easier doing the water wash. Otherwise, you would have to basically run it for like an hour and a half running water, which was ridiculous back in those days. And you still couldn't get rid of all of the, the fixer from the uh, paper fibers. Once um, resin coated paper, yes, they were, there was some resin coated paper in the darkroom days. Once that came out, then the uh, fixer would only enter the coating of silver and it could be washed off of that coating. It could not penetrate through the resin coating of the paper itself. So it made washing a matter of a couple of minutes, which was a huge improvement. And of course, great for the environment you know, that you were not dumping all of this water, you know, with fixer in it, okay, into the, your uh, drain. Basically, it's just going out to the drain. So, Boris Tomasian. Hello, Jose. Thank you for your insights. I ended up getting a PC ink set with my Pro 100. I follow your videos to refill the cartridge and just had my first successful refill well now you're going to have your first successful reprint make sure that you have run a couple of cleaning cycles prior to maybe using one of uh, uh precision colors free uh, custom profiles for a lot of papers uh, so if you have a paper and they have a profile for it i highly recommend you download it download the d d50 d50 profile they, there's other versions they're meant for different illumination conditions, but the standard is D50. So download that one, install it, and then use it while you print. Make sure you do not double profile. Make sure that you are um, turning off color management in the driver and letting your, your editing application that you're printing from use that profile. You tell it to control color, tell the driver not to control color, and then you load that profile, you should get a very good result. The thing you should print first always is your standard image. That is what you need to do. Okay. I don't know what to say. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Boris says, my colors are terrible all over the place. I use a Mac computer and downloaded the Q image for Mac. I did help somewhat, but it's still far from being accurate. Okay, let's let's discuss this a little bit more. When you say they're all over the place, here's what you need to do to eliminate your monitor. So print the standard image. I don't know what you're printing from, but load it in your application file print. Do not adjust it any way at all. File print and or or export it to um, Q image. In other words, do this instead. Forget it. Forget it. Forget what I just said. I just remember I'm I'm working in Windows. So open it in Q image one, load that image and print it. Load the paper that you're using, obviously. The first the printer, the paper, and the size, letter size or Q or A4, whatever you're using. And then you tell it to suggest a profile. It will show you that profile for that paper. You load it, and then you print. And the QMH Ultimate or the QMH One, depending what you're using, whether you're using Windows or Mac, uh, will set the driver correctly. So print that, and then make your decision as to what your printer's output is. You should get this you should get a perfect rendition of that standard image it should look just like this perfectly neutral 
linear throughout that whole tonal range ramp. It goes from black, almost black, to white. It should be neutral. It should not change at all. Okay. So if you get this, basically using Q image, remember Q image will take care of your your settings, your color uh, management, color sync in a Mac, um, or for you automatically, and so your results should be pretty close to this. Okay. So then, and only then, can you say that when I print my regular photographs, the ones that I edit, and they come out looking bad. It could be because I'm making them look bad because my monitor is not displaying them accurately. So it's causing me, it's forcing me to adjust those colors, the brightness, the contrast, probably unnecessarily to make them look great on my bad monitor. And I don't mean bad quality. I mean, it's just simply not calibrated. So it's not displaying the colors correctly. And you're having to then adjust for that that erroneous display, okay? And making them look okay. And then what 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 happens? Then you send that to the printer. The image is bad already, and the printer just prints it, okay? Representing the values that the image contains, which to you you don't see that because it's not being displayed correctly anyway to begin with, and you have to compensate. It's crazy. All right. We'll be talking more about that. Don't worry. So, you you guys are, are are crazy. Thank you. Appreciate that. I don't know why this is happening every Sunday for years. No one even thought about clicking on that super chat. It it really really helps. Live streams do not generate hardly anything even though they're two hours three hours long they just don't they survive on this type of support so thank you so much thank you so much i appreciate that all right Whew. ag schmitty hi i use photoshop and have an impression have the impression have the impression bpc doesn't do anything for me regardless of the color metric. If Epson print layout, in Epson print layout, it makes a huge difference on the same photo. Printer is fixed, by the way. Impression, what is that? I, I, I'm sorry, Schmitty, but please clarify what you're asking or telling me here. Um, yeah, you're using that's a that's a lay a a, uh, a plugin, um, but I don't know what PC. So that is that. I don't know what PC, BPC is impression. So please clarify that, and I'll be glad to uh, comment on it. You may have to educate me. Okay. Oh, black point compensation. Okay. So, what does that do? If you look at if you look at your say if you're using Adobe Photoshop and you go to I don't have Adobe open but not just adjust your brightness and contrast but levels and you see the curve that image has um, that bottom portion of that we used to call it a gamma curve in the in the film days <clears throat> that that lower portion represents your lower tones so like tone one or zero through six or eight will be literally flat that means they are just there's no difference between any of those eight steps there should be a difference so they are sort of become all of them become black one value that's without color uh, without black point compensation so supposedly once you click on black point compensation that will then allow that curve instead of being flat to be more like this so you will be able to see steps one two three four five six in some images maybe it's an image issue 
they will not show any any difference okay so in epson print layout it makes a huge difference on the same photo but when you use it in photoshop it does not i cannot say i cannot say why i i really don't print in photoshop any longer i go directly to qimage through its export filter so <clears throat> it, it's just set to that I never print without black com black point composition. You can actually see the difference if you are soft proofing. In other words, you load an image, you have edited it already, and I think you go to Control Y, and it'll open up the uh, the uh, uh, soft proofing. You load the profile you're going to be printing with. The click on the little box, and it'll show you what your print will probably look like through that particular paper and that particular soft proofing um, that particular ICC profile and then you can turn black point composition on and off and you see the differences usually what you see is a little slightly more blocked lower tones so if if Epson print layout makes a huge difference a positive difference then use it you know don't try to analyze it I'm, I I used to do that that's why I have no hair, right? I don't do that any longer. I just, I just, psh, okay. Yes, this works better than that. And I just stick to it. Why would I lose sleep or, or, you know, get a headache trying to analyze it? Just use it. Boris has a BenQ. 2K 32 inch monitor. I'm jealous. With sRGB color space, I have calibrated it with a i1 calibrator. Oh, wow. Okay. So, is that the what the monitor is rated for? It's not Adobe RGB, just sRGB. It's a little bit lower. Most, most really top quality monitors now are more in the Adobe RGB color space. But that's good. That's good. That's better than what I have. I might lose my hairs then. Yeah. I started losing my hair quite early. Okay. Thank God I used to wear a green beret and uh, I never took that sucker off. <laughs> anyway, uh, we thought we were better than anyone else. So even indoors, we kept our, our headgear on. And uh, of course, that would tick off everybody else but nobody really bothered us about that so we kept doing it okay so we have 48 people now on board and that's wonderful and let's see uh yeah another donation thank you so very much i use spider 2x color calibration to adjust my monitor now my prints match what i see on the screen yeah that's all it that's all it takes folks that's all it takes this is the one that I have they were uh, very uh, gracefully uh, donated this to me and I tested it the only thing that I found compared to say that's a 200 and something dollar item compared to this fifteen hundred dollar one over here is this is a little bit more um, Repeatable, in other words, the, the results that you get before and after are pretty much identical from a previously calibrated monitor. You just recalibrate it every three or four months, and you know if your monitor is not drifting much, you should not see a difference. But with the other one, I had to make some slight adjustments at the end of the calibration because once I got a slightly greenish-looking type uh, cast on my monitor, uh, maybe that was you know my issue and not the units issue i'm sure because that's not a really super cheap uh, unit either it's a very good one so anyway yeah whatever you have whatever you are going to use run it correctly set it to d65 for your white point for your monitor that will give you a neutral looking result that you can then rely on to be able to edit your images that's what you need to do <laughs> yes. The problem with my P900 was with the ink cartridges. I had I had them in too long and the ink began became too thick. 
at the bottom. Yeah, you need to really uh, agitate. Or did you have the, I have ones somewhere here. Those are OEM, right? So here is an OEM P900 cartridge. You should, it should look familiar to you. Just do this like crazy. But keep, you know, keep in mind that you have ink lines to deal with. And so those ink lines are beyond that cartridge. So sure, you can resuspend the pigment in the cartridges, but the ink lines continue onward and they have already settled inside the ink lines and of course inside the printhead dampers which are little tiny like they're like mini cartridges and so they just hold a certain amount of ink before it feeds the actual set of nozzles per channel and so that has to be kept moving so agitate the cartridges run some cleaning cycles you will waste some ink but you will get rid of that heavy ink that's downstream uh, other issues that you may experience are odd color like strong reds or strong yellows or strong anything because of the higher density ink the higher density pigment once that settles down yeah and gordon says i lost all my hair over color management if i had started watching you sooner i would still have a full head of hair ah uh, well i don't know about that it took me forever and i thought i was sort of intelligent i don't know maybe i was overestimating myself but uh it wasn't until one night one night in my stupor laying in bed and i it, it was like somebody just turned a light on inside my brain i think i heard a choir of angels singing in the background and i got it and i got out of bed and i went down here and printed something and voila it was as perfect as i could even, you know make it be so there was a huge level of confusion not only in my part but also the sources that were supposed to be educating you this is very early in the in the um, age of digital photo printing so yeah it, it was hilarious i i almost laughed so loud my wife woke up <laughs> yeah so all right anyway enough of that okay so let's go back i don't know how i ended up up there again but here we go <laughs> I got a P900 working again. The ink was in too long. And again, okay. Yeah, so that's it. That, that used to happen with certain refillable type products where the, the particles, see, technically, and I was discussing this with Mike Lee because he deals with ink, right? So technically, each, each base, meaning the clear solution onto which pigment particles are added, these pigment particles have been ground to specific sizes. They're not all the same size. Or just It's just like gravel. And you may sc screen gravel to allow a certain smaller pieces to fall through the screen. And only the ones that are bigger than the screen holes stay. And then you rescreen that and rescreen that. And finally, you get a very even gravel uh, where all of them little particles of gravel, even though they are... They all look irregular. They're not exactly the same, but they are about the same size. Well, with pigment particles, they differ in size. So Epson will resin encapsulate each particle. Yes. So what you have, instead of having a little rocky, round piece of gravel, you have a smooth, it looks like a, like a jelly bean. With a smooth surface, that smooth surface is the resin coating. And that allows it to pass through the much larger nozzle on your printhead without getting stuck. Imagine a lot of irregularly shaped little particles. They could end up clumping and getting stuck. And once that nozzle hole gets clumped, nothing can, can dissolve it. That's it. You cannot dissolve pigment. You can only dissolve dye. So 
you have to utilize other more invasive methods. So the ink is supposed to, the particles, the ink, we'll call it the particles, the pigment particles are supposed to float. Imagine if you're a diver, you have all your paraphernalia on your body and you jump in the water and you float because you're neutrally buoyant, you float. And then somebody pulls you down 10 feet and you continue floating regardless of the level. Now, in real life, of course, the lower you go, the higher the pressure. But anyway, but that's supposed to be what's happening with ink. The particles are supposed to be neutrally buoyant and they're not supposed to settle, but they settle. Okay. They will settle. There's no, there's no way around that. So the longer the printer stays unused, oh, I have one. My art 3000 is probably a mess right now. So I have to deal with that sometime in the future. Um, but that's what happens. You have to, you have to re resuspend that. And so if the printer, such as the R3000, as we're talking, or any other stationary cartridge printer sits around and all that ink is settled, the particles that is pigment, yeah, you can resuspend the cartridges, but inside the you cannot shake the printer. You see, so you're going to have to push that out somehow. Hopefully, your channels are clear, but they're printing heavily. The colors are off, too strong, whatever the case may be. You need to push that out. You need to bring it down to the normal density level for that ink by pushing the now resuspended ink in your cartridge through the ink lines and eject that heavy ink out of the dampers and then start again. And this time, don't let it happen. Yeah, I let it happen. Of course I do. You know, we're all human, so no one is perfect. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about waste ink pads real quick. So I think I've discussed this in the past. Waste ink pads, are always found on printers that have cartridges that run with the printed carriage, okay? So you remove, open up the lid to remove a cartridge that's empty and you replace it with a full one. When you close the lid, what happened? You just expose that printhead to air by simply removing that cartridge. So you have to empty that whole channel inside that printhead push it out because there may be some air in it. So it's using your ink. Not only is using the ink from the new cartridge, but all of the other cartridges itself. There's no way you can isolate just one color over another color. It has to, it has to purge all 8, 10, 12, whatever the case may be. And now you can be assured that your printhead, now that it's ready to print again, has no air in it. Well, that ink that is sucked out of your printhead goes through the purge pad through a tubing into a pump and then down to the what? The waste ink pads. They're sitting at the bottom of your printer chassis. Okay. How simple is it to get to them? It's impossible. It, it, imagine if you had to dismantle your whole car, everything, just to get to something. And that something is just a diaper, a nappy. It is an absorbent piece of material that allows the waste ink to generate through cleaning cycles, purge cycles, and such to then be absorbed in it. That's all it is. At some point, the counter reaches max. You got to replace that diaper, that nappy. And it requires a complete disassembly of the, your printer. Well, that shop better be really good at that. Otherwise, I'll just say, forget it. Get a new printer. We, we don't do that any longer. And many shops don't do that any longer. It costs too much to do. It is a nasty job. So they don't want to do that. So what you can do prior to that on certain Epson printers is to divert the ink. Not going inside the pads, but going outside to a bottle. Okay, Depending on the printer you own. As long as it's one of those the particular type printers, a 1400, a, three, a 340, 380, anything that has cartridges that write on the printhead, you can remove the side panel. Right there, you'll see the hoses, and you disconnect one, reconnect it to a long piece of tubing. 
You may have to drill a hole through the side if you want to reinstall the side. I just don't reinstall the sides anymore. And I run it out to a bottle and I collect the ink that way. Yes, eventually I will reach a point where my counter says, hey, your pads are saturated. No, they're not because I've been diverting it to a bottle. Okay. So what I need to do is use a resetter to reset my counter back to zero. That is what they would do after they replace your pads and then clean the inside and then reinstall everything. Wow. And so you reset the counter and yeah, you're good to go. Costs about $9.99, $9.99 to buy the serial code for it. Inkchip.net sells that. And so it's the easiest way to do that. Extremely simple procedure. I have videos that show you how to do that. I have a, I have a code that will give you a discount as well for that. So that way your printer doesn't have to be thrown away, which is ridiculous. Now, if you are a regular user, you use your printer regularly, and you would probably never reach that point where you have to reset those, those counters. It, it will probably give you several years, if not five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years. I have printers that old that are still working, and I've never had to reset them. So it depends. It depends on how many cycles you generate. And that way, once you reach that point, again, remember you're, you're dumping the ink outside, not inside your pads. You reset it using that, that piece of software. It's free. You just have to pay for the uh, codes. And uh, you're back down to zero. Last, if you had replaced the pads, you get that bottle, add a little bleach, bleach to it. It'll... It'll be ready to be thrown down the drain. It'll probably help you clean the drain out anyway. And then you reinstall that bottle to that piece of tubing and you're ready to go again. Collect more ink as you are working on your regular uh, routine with that printer. That's what I do to all my Epson printers that allow you to do that because it is crazy for you to have to, you know, throw that printer out because the, the shop doesn't want to deal with it and they don't. Now, Canon printers, Pro 100, Pro 300, any, any one of you who owns a Pro 200 and a 300, does it have a user replaceable maintenance cartridge? I don't think it does. I think it still uses internal pads. There's no way for you to divert that ink externally, and there's no way for you to reset those counters. At least I don't know of a way to do it. So when it happens, it happens, and it's going to be at that point you just replace the printer because a lot of shops won't touch it. Okay. So give you an idea, my Pro 100 is 10 years plus old already, and I have not gotten that dreadful. Uh, message yet that you know some parts of my printer have reached the end of their life so far so good so Luis Murak says how long do you wait for prints to dry after doing custom profiles so I print my charts and I scan them the next day if you print your charts with something like what I do here, this is what I do. If I'm going to just do the 10, 15, 20 minute dry time, fine. I got the program still open. I let them sit and dry. Maybe I put a fan on them to in increase the drying rate and then I proceed to scan them. But what I do is I save, I save the generated chart as a TIFF and then I use Q image to print those charts with using no color management in the driver and no color whatsoever management in the Q image application is the only one that allows you to do that. And you must do that. When you print from the spectrum photometer software, it's doing that as well. It's not providing any kind of, any kind of interference color wise. You turn off color management, the driver and the application is not affecting the color you generated either. So you get a perfectly raw result that you can then scan. So what I do, 
is I just let them dry overnight. I, I used a TIFF file to print my charts with. Do I have some of those here? And then I just let it let it uh, dry overnight. No, I don't have that handy. Over there somewhere. But and that will make sure that any any drift in color that may occur during the drying process has already taken place. And now I can scan it and be satisfied that that is the final look of that set of charts. I scan each one of those little patches and I am good to go. The profile that will provide, yes, you print with it, no color management again, but you use the profile now, okay? So the driver, no color management, but instead of telling QImage off everything, you tell it to control color, load that profile, black point compensation, and that's it you just print oh um rendering in 10 relative colorimetric that's a must that's what i use and so then you print and you should be good to go that should be it the profile you should create took into account any possible change in color that took place during the drying process and that's incorporated into the profile itself okay if you do it as soon as you print it you scan it then your results are going to change. They'll look good at first, but later on they will shift a little bit. It may be enough for you to notice. Maybe yes, maybe no. It depends. Wait a minute. I just don't print enough to get the big 50 ml inks in time 50 ml inks what are you using again anyway yeah you have to yeah we're going to talk about uh, frequency of printing and how i how now i'm printing a lot more often because i can generate all kinds of fun images Wow, Kelsey Miller, $20 super chat. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks for sharing so much knowledge and advice out there. Made me brave enough to pick up and fix an R3000. Awesome, and it's been a great hobby and tool. This is such a rewarding hobby, folks. Yes, it's not a cheap hobby, but what hobby? What hobby out there is really cheap if you get if you get into it seriously, you see? So... You need something that will enrich your life and will just make you feel so good when you create something. If you create it yourself or you shot the photograph yourself and then you print it, and it's a lot different than seeing it on your on your cell phone, having a print in your in your dirty little fingers. Yes, yeah, that's me. Ink everywhere. Yes. So yeah, there's a huge difference. Wait a minute. I said that you you did not respond to the dry time. Yes, I did. Um, I do mine overnight. I was talking about um, if you print from the application itself, you basically have to leave the application open, and then you wait a given amount of time. Uh, most of them, 10 minutes is supposed to be enough. I just leave them overnight, and then I come back and print them later and uh, scan them later. So. As long as they are fully, fully dry and any kind of uh, degassing has taken place already, that means that the ink has completely evaporated and all the gases have left that paper. Okay. Okay, so Rick Johnson told me they both have internal pads. So there you go. That's going to happen to you guys, depending how much waste and cue generate. It's going to eventually reach a point. But just to give you just to give you an example, my, my Pro 100, um, this is the first time I had to replace a printhead in 10 years. It was 10 years old in August, mid-August of this year. So that means I got it 10 years ago. Wow, it's an old printer, and it's still working fine, you know. And so far, no no problem with the waste pads. Miss Wendy, how are you, my dear? Belgium. Wow, Belgium, beautiful place. That's where my son was born. I keep saying that to everyone. 
he's very proud of having dual citizenship. Uh, Pro 1000 and all OEM, awesome. Emmanuel is here from Normandy. Uh, Jose, did you not respond to the dry time, the profile? Tag? Yes, I did. What happened? Did everybody not, not hear me? Yeah, overnight, at least overnight, or, or, um, you know, some programs, they say 10 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever the program says, but I recommend overnight. Yeah. Oh, what? Then what did you want to know? What did you want to know? You asked about how long to allow it to dry. Was that not the question? Or was it something other? Okay, right here. Yeah, that's it. How long? How long do you wait for prints to dry after doing custom profiles? So I assume you're talking about the profile charts that you generate, right? Overnight. Henry Stoffel. AGS Schmitty, Schmitty says, uh, what does Epson expect a P900 user to replace? $440 worth of ink every six months. I have a P800. And some inks are over two years in the printer with refills dated three and four years old with no settling. Yeah, it depends. With the, with the uh, P800 and even earlier, earlier printers of the same category, you can go on eBay and, and buy expired cartridges. It will not be an issue, I guarantee you. It, it'll work fine. It'll work fine. Just agitate the hell out of them. Then let it sit overnight before you install them in your printer. All right, I'm going to go ahead and load Photoshop one second, give you a bit of a, of a um, treat, if you will. I just found, I was watching a video on YouTube and found a new software that's right now on the, I think it's on a beta type um, level right now, still being developed, but made available for people to then use it and, and recommend uh, changes or suggestions. So let's go ahead and let that open up. I'm going to pop it on that side and we'll be able to see it. I supposedly can share my main screen, but I'm afraid to do so. I don't want to mess up the stream. Let me get this somewhat to fit my weird screen here. Okay. So if I fill this so that you see it filling the whole screen, then it goes way off the edges of my 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 screen really cannot be calibrated to the correct um, resolution. It just cannot. It's crap. But anyway, we'll deal with it. So we're gonna open up just a blank file. And let me show you what I'm talking about. We, we need something along 2,000 pixels. Let's see. We'll make it 2,000 pixels wide and like 1,500 wide. I mean high. That's it. And then uh, I think we'll do that like that maybe. Boom. Okay. So 
yeah you'll have to deal um live with this as it is right now but because oh shoot i want to make sure you guys can see what i'm doing i do not need this because we're using something called alpaca and what i'm going to do is i'm going to write so select and i'm going to select this in place please enter a prompt so how about oh i don't know let's just pick something space battle outer no outer space battle and i wanted to produce let's see let me go to the advanced i wanted to produce not five but just three three different versions so we'll just hit generate this is one that i previously generated so it's doing the job of generating those images for us again this is just for people who are don't have anything to print just for fun generate something print it and uh, use it here we go look at that add all i am going to reduce that and i'm going to go down let me see Here we go. This is my channel. I want layers. Yeah, that's right. Layers. So I have three layers here. We'll deactivate the top two. This is this is a scene. I'm gonna remove this. That way we can see what we're doing. And you can see. It's not super high resolution. Remember, it was only 1500 by 2000. It's basically limited to that. I think 2000 by 2000 is the limit. So, second version. So, you just want to make a poster, an interesting poster. Boom. That is a beautiful piece of artwork right there, if you ask me. Okay. And you can go into Q image and then print that larger. And because Q images um, way of um, uh, upresting, in other words, is as good as anything uh, that you may run across, like any of those uh, plugins in in uh, um, type of uh, tools that will do increase in uh, resolution or, or image size without losing detail. Um, it's it's just fabulous. Uh, I could actually use, let's just say I like this one. Let's see. We'll pick that one. And I'm going to go ahead and dump this first layer. And we'll dump the second layer. And we'll go ahead and merge the layers. Then I'm going to go to view, not to neural filter in my, in my filter setup. And I'm going to go to zoom. This is where I can actually increase the size of the uh, actual image. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, here it is. Uh, Super Zoom is new. You got to download it because I'm using the beta version of Photoshop right now. I installed it on my regular uh, current Photoshop um, 2024. But this is the beta, so I'm a little bit ahead of everybody. Um, so now that's installed. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a little noise reduction. I'm going to sharpen about that much, halfway. And I'm going to zoom this. One, two, three. It's going to do a very large zoom. You will see. Once it finishes, I'll say OK. 
and then we'll send that sucker over to QImage. So OK. And as you can see, much larger than it used to be. OK. So now I'm going to go to File, Automate, File, Automate, QImage Ultimate. We'll wait for Ultimate to load. Then I'll close Photoshop. And we'll proceed to print it. So now I'm going to close up Photoshop. Oh, I closed up QImage. No, I didn't. Right here. Sorry. My bad. Okay, so here's the image. I'm going to go ahead and load it. I don't want the low quality version of it. It sent both of them over. So I believe this is the one we want. And I'll check it to see if it is indeed the, the high resolution one. Yeah, 8,000 by 6,000. That's pretty good. You can see right here, 8,000 by 6,000 resolution. So this is what we're going to print. I'm not going to do anything to it at this point. Well, yeah, maybe I will. We'll do an exposure set, 0.5 above black, 0.5 below white. That will adjust that range. And then we're going to sharpen it. We'll do the out sharp output, what they call output sharpening. We'll use one radius and say 150. And you'll see here the sharpening taking place. There you go. We just saw it. We'll add a little bit more, maybe 175. We should be able to see it right here. Yeah, that's good without getting crazy grainy looking results. Let me see if we can get away with 200. Oh yeah, no problem. So hit OK. And now I'll walk you through the process to print this through Q image. I have some eight and a half by 13 custom size paper loaded. It's a uh, luster type paper, nine and a half by. So it's going to go ahead and load that there. I have a border all the way around it. We should have the proper A sub luster paper uh, profile loaded. Ultra premium photo paper luster choice, 8550, 8, 9.5 by 13. And we'll just go ahead and print it. Let me make sure I do have that paper there. Yes, I do. So we'll wait for it to print through. And we'll see what it looks like. It should be. A very, very good result. And we just generated that. I could take that to my PA100 and I can do a 17 by whatever print. If I had a bigger printer, like like some of you guys have a 2100 Canon or, or larger of the 40, uh, the 4000 one, then you can do a four, a four inch by whatever poster. You can do it on canvas. You can then take that canvas, stretch it over some stretcher bars, varnish it. Yes, you can create art, and this you can sell. There is no issues with you generating income by printing and selling these generated images. Pretty good. All right, let's continue on. We got 40. We were almost at, I think we were at 52 at some time. So a couple of people left, but that's okay. So yeah, this is again another donation. Wow, thank you, Lewis. Um, thanks for answering. Very helpful response. Yes, thank you so much, my friend. Let's go ahead and while that is printing, the Photoshop generative fill. Remember, I did where a narrow picture, then I extended the side, and when it was able to generate what should be there magically as of november the first this year that did not that was no longer a free thing okay you have to use what they call credits and they give you so many credits per month depending on your type of um, um, account that you have so i got the account that gives me a thousand credits per month so that's good. 
I'm able to do that daily. What? Even if it was uh, 30 times a day, which is not going to be, that would only use up 900 credits in a 30 day period. So that should get me um, everything I need to be able to adjust my actual images. I'm not trying to manufacture a, 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 an image. Remember my grandson's grimace picture like this? And I made him smile sweetly just by adjusting that portrait and making it a little bit happier. That's all you have to do. It does that automatically and it still looks like him. It's not fakery. I just adjust it. I could use the, I think it's li liquify filter in Photoshop and do the same thing. You know, you can adjust a, a waistline. You can adjust anything and it looks like it's real, but it's fake. But you need to have a limit to how much you use this. You don't want to go hog wild and end up with something that is unreal looking. You have to keep it natural. So every time I do that, cost one credit. Okay. So if I want to generate three images, such as this, say I want to make more cards. So we did this one. Little Easter bunny. That was generated. See, these are cards. Christmas Village. Imagine you're in Switzerland. Yeah, beautiful. You could do um, Caribbean Beach, and it will generate a graphic like that. You have to tell it not to be uh, like if you use the previous program that I showed you. It tends to generate um, graphic type generations, not photographic quality um, level of generations. So, but still, it will give you material with which you can then keep your printers happy by printing the way you're supposed to daily. Something small, it doesn't matter what it is, uh, as long as you print something. And make sure that what you're printing, in order to keep your printer happy, you're just not simply printing a nozzle check or printing one of those unclogged tool weird lines. It's use, that's useless. You cannot use that for anything. Print something you're going to be able to use. And at the same time, you'll be performing what you need to do, which is printing. You see what I mean? So you're printing something usable. That either it'll be for your wall or if you're selling, then you can actually, yeah, I had to print. So I might as well print something I can then sell. That's, that's the whole goal. <laughs> Come on. What do you guys think? Is that good enough? Is that a good enough poster? I believe so. I truly do. Very good resolution for what it is, really. It's, it's just those little stars are just pinpoints. Uh, right there, there's a bunch of little tiny microscopic little stars in that background. This is fantastic. Fantastic. It's called alpaca. At, at, at some point, it's going to become the real deal. So I don't know whether they're going to be charging or not for it. So, okay. Somebody wanted to make refrigerator magnets. See, that photograph of my grandson was a scan from a refrigerator magnet. And when you put something on a refrigerator, refrigerator is a electrical unit it's always on right and it tends to generate a greater amount of ozone and for some reason kitchens are always bright brighter than your regular rooms like your living room and such where you're watching tv you want a slightly darker environment kitchens and on the refrigerator wall is a disaster waiting to happen for your photographs so they will fade faster don't ask me how or why I just think there's a lot more ozone present there. So 
that print, I think it was a sublimation type print because it was on a magnetic piece of uh, material. And the way I used to make them is the material you buy is already pre-coated. It's got a white surface and a uh, um, polyester clear coat, and you sublimate to that. That's it. Um, it didn't really fade that much. Other things like real photographs that I have put with a magnet on it, they just fade. So this wasn't too bad. So I went ahead and scanned it. Now, he's making prints on like luster paper and then somehow gluing it to magnet material. I don't know what he's doing, but it's fading quickly. And it is due to that, that basically fatal combination kitchen and a refrigerator i don't know what it is it, it just nothing less okay so he's using a dye ink printer so if you want to continue doing this and you want to use that type of process where you're going to print on photographic paper and then somehow attach that to the magnetic uh, media uh, it's like a, you know what i'm talking about it's flexible you better print with a pigment-based printer, or you better treat that print with a dyeing printer to at least slow down the fading process due to oxidation. So you could use a, a protectant spray, and you should be able to have something that'll last years. How long do you need a refrigerator magnet to last? Seriously, right? So choose your poison, as they say. You want something to last for decades, then you need to go with pigment. And then still on top of that, apply a coat of um, preserving type varnish. And that way it will not only stop allowing air to enter where the ink molecules are and affect them, but it will also block UV light from affecting the dye or in this case pigment. Pigment just simply will not fade that quickly when it comes to UV um, exposure. It just doesn't. This is a good one, but I need to look this up. I need to look this up on my Facebook group because I was like, come on. So let me search for this. Here we go. Let me see how I can do this. So. I don't embarrass the person. Okay, so here I am. Let me do this one first. I'm looking for an A2 photo printer. So A2 would be larger than a letter size. I want to print myself but I don't print that often, maybe once a month. That Just use an online service. That is just not often enough for most printers. Yeah, you could get away with it, but you know, if you have an Epson printer, it's not going to kill you by running extensive pre-print cleaning cycles before you print. If you're going to print only something, only something that's photographic only once a month, then you have to do nozzle checks every few days or do the QMH unclog tool and just schedule it to print. Yeah, you cannot just just print once a month. Yeah, you can, but you should not. It really is not recommended. Ink can begin to settle. And when you print that just one that one print, it's not going to agitate that ink enough. And it'll just continue settling. So yeah, don't do that. I would recommend you just go to an online service or if you have a local a place where you can have your stuff printed. I posted in for in Facebook. What did you post in Facebook? Michael Cantor. Do I have you here? No. Okay. Yeah, tell me what is it that you posted. It's 
Schmitty to Henry. I can only tell you what happened to me, and it's written on a box of the cartridges. Mine were for two years before it became a problem. Maybe you could expand that by shaking. Yeah. Anything you buy that's already past its uh, guaranteed lifespan, you need to resuspend, especially pigment type. I asked the same question on Facebook. Oh, okay. Question about version control. Sometimes I make different Lightroom edits of the same image to print, or I edit after printing. Later, I may not know which print corresponds to which edit. When you make it, do you make duplicate uh, files? I I don't know whether you can name them uh, or what. Hmm. You could export them and then name the file, and that way you can keep track as to what what you did to what version. That's an option. David Meyer can can QMH help me stay organized about what I have printed? Yeah, it keeps a record of everything you print. Everything is an indefinite record. So yes, in that case, the answer is yes. All right, let's look at this. I got this result. I mean, take a look at that. It's on plain paper, it looks like this. And on photo paper, it looks like that. Remember that? So it turns out that this was before he switched over to the refilled lot. So I think this was a two, uh, a 100, a pro, pro 100. So we'll leave it at that. I don't want to, I don't want to expose this publicly too much. But anyway, so what caused that? What caused it to be so cyanish? Strongly cyan. Question after question after question, back and forth. Then finally, oh, I mistakenly filled my photo cyan with cyan. The full strength cyan. The printer has no clue you did that. So it's going to use that stronger ink. And I think he also flipped. He actually filled the cyan cartridge with photo cyan. So yeah, double, double problem. So the only way to do that, uh, fix that, if you have two sets of cartridges, is go ahead and fill the other set correctly. Reinstall those two cyan cartridges. Take the bad ones out. Flush them. And start again, flush them, let them dry, and then refill those carefully again. The way to avoid this is just to have a very organized method of refilling. Get yourself Rudy's holders. Yeah, I'm not I'm not just trying to push his products. They are usable. The holder will hold all eight of your cartridges. They are labeled by color. Put them there. You get two holders. And one of them is white and one of them is red. Decide which color you want to have your prior to refill and reset cartridges. So you remove a set. You install a full reset and filled cartridge to your printer. Now you have that set you remove. You're going to have one that was almost low and you're going to have the rest at different, different levels. You're going to one by one reset them and put them back in there. Determine when you want to refill these when you have time, right? Because it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a process. So you set up your work area. You have your holder here. Then you have your empty holder here. You grab your yellow. You grab your yellow ink. Look at it. Yes, it's yellow. And yes, I have a yellow. Where it gets tricky is with your magentas. And your science because you have two of them. 
you have your full strength magenta, full strength cyan, and then photo magenta, photo cyan. That's the one you have to be careful with. And also your gray. Do not put black in your gray channel and gray in your black, I mean cartridge, and gray in your black cartridge. You're going to experience the same problem. So yeah, just stay very organized. Use the holders. When you finish refilling one, you put it on the refilled rack. In other words, that's ready. It's reset. It's topped off, ready to be installed as needed. And so you do the second one, the third, all the way you finish with the eight. Or if you have a Pro 10, you finish with all 10 of them. And now you are assured. Now, do not leave all your bottles all, to, all in a big clump. No. One bottle at a time. Do not confuse yourself. How do I know that? Oh, yeah, you can guess. I've done it numerous times. Gosh, where I slapped myself. Yeah, called myself all kinds of names. Yeah, it happens. So be very aware of the possibility of mistakes. And the ramifications is your output is going to be crazy. You're not going to understand what's going on. Are my settings wrong? No, you just used the wrong color ink. That's simple as that. You're going to have to flush them. Once you flush them, you let them dry. And then uh, photo cyan, get that photo cyan bottle, look at it, identify it, put it down. In woodworking, it's measure twice, cut once. Okay? That way you measure, you measure, you measure, and cut once. Maybe three times and cut once. That way you're not making a mistake which you cannot remedy later. Okay, so now there are ways to get away with this a little bit. So in, it only works in one situation where, say, for instance, your, your cyan cartridge received photo cyan instead. Well, that's a lighter version. So what I would suggest is for you to just drain it completely. You can drain those cartridges. You already... Are modified for refilling. Stick is I don't have one here. Stick a syringe with a, with a simple a plain tip on the the plug hole and push the ink up. Just pump it with air and the ink will leave. And then load it with the regular correct strength cyan ink and push that cyan ink out again by the second fill. It'll be fine. Yeah, you just lost some ink, but it's better than sticking it in your printer, and then printing some terrible-looking photographs. So the other way around, however, where you put cyan in the photo cyan cartridge, no, you have to flush that one. It's just too much. You have to start from fresh. You need flushed cartridges. You know who's here, Rick Johnson. I have his links to his, his eBay store. He will provide you with everything already prepped, and not just not just um, modified cartridges. Also, um, use a replaceable wasting cartridges for various printers. I think it's a G620 or something like that from Canon. The 8550, the 15,000, all of those printers they have use a replaceable cartridges. And so, if you have also, I believe that the 85. 100 uses the same cartridge as the 8550 as well. So, again, uh, you don't have to buy OEM. You can buy a replacement that is third party, as good as OEM. And you can also do your own swapping of those dirty pads if you're brave enough. He sells those replacement pads as well. So, have a look at his website. He's got a lot to offer, not a website, but the eBay site. He's got a lot to offer. And again, don't be attempting to do this yourself. Believe me, I've done it. It is a pain in the, you know what, to flush a complete set of cartridges. To me, $60 or whatever it costs is worth the money. Okay. The headache, what headache? I get them ready to refill. Okay. He has sold a thousand units already, not units, not individuals, but sets and a thousand percent of satisfaction. Tell me what product out there gets a 100% satisfaction rating. Not very many. All right. That's enough for that. All right. Let's go ahead and continue on. Let 
we talked about the the wrong ink and the wrong card. So somebody installed a printer on a MacBook Pro but cannot find it. Of course, you guys know exactly what the problem might be. He probably maybe I'm just I'm just speculating here. He probably just plugged it in and let the OS load the driver. Technically, it is supposed to find the actual Canon driver or Epson driver. But often people make a mistake and they use the AirPrint. Now, I'm thinking back when I started, and this is when I when I opened up today, I told you I was going to talk about this. I started uh, using computers in the days of like DOS, okay, for Windows, believe it or not. And then I think Windows 3. Point something came out, and the government changed all of our computers to Windows 3.1, I think it was. But for our laboratory analytical type studies, we had to use Macintosh computers, Apple computers, because the software was only for Apple computers. So we were living in both worlds. So I'm doing my analysis on an Apple computer, and I'm just doing my word processing on the Windows. And then printers came out, and I thought, hey, wait a minute. I'm a photographer, right, supposedly? been doing this in the army for 20 plus years so let me get into this but i know i'm going to i'm going to hate it and so you know i got into it and realized that oh the quality is not really what even close to what we're getting in a regular darkroom print so what to do well i'll just stick with it so i come to find out that there was such a thing as a actual driver for actual individual models and when i finally began to do that i started realizing that wait a minute on my mac computer using the plug-in method and letting it install the printer i'm only going to get generic type settings and they are all the same regardless of what printer was plugged into the computer because no one realized that they had to go to canon dot uh, com usa whatever and Epson USA and download an actual specific printer. Yeah, you do have to do that. And it's imperative to do that. Otherwise, you're just not going to get every setting that you see me use. And you, uh, all of a sudden you go like, wait a minute, Jose, I'm not seeing any of that on my driver. What's up? You're using the air driver. So the mistake is easy to make in people that are very savvy with the Apple product sometimes make that mistake because they're just used to doing that um, like i said the developmental folks that i know they know for a fact that it's just that is really not a high priority item on the list okay whereas um, and maybe it's the company's fault canon and epson they tend to favor windows whatever but i can go to epson.com go to the resources tab and I can find a working driver for my ancient over 20, over 15, maybe seven, 17 years old R340 printer and even older ones. I can still find the drivers for that. And when I install it on my up-to-date Windows 10, it installs. Uh, that's not the case with some of the new uh, OSs for Apple. It's like sometimes they drop the support for certain older printers, unfortunately. And it, it, it gets to be a little bit more difficult to, to not only update and keep up to, with the current updates, but then the support for older printers may be dropped. And that I'm just thinking out of my, you know, uh, that's what I have heard from people. So it's not just me making that up. This is from people telling me. So what I do, my computer is absolutely dedicated to nothing but YouTube. Okay, I do the YouTube uploads there. I do all my photographic editing. I use uh, it for um, search online and, of course, video editing, image editing, and number one, priority printing. So 
I'm not playing games. I don't have anything else loaded that has to do with non-photographic type or related type products. So I have a dedicated computer just for that. So that's why, to me, it doesn't matter what OS I use because my computer is dedicated to that. Had I been using a Mac, it would be dedicated to that. I would not be using my Mac for fun stuff. I would not be using my Windows computer for fun stuff. It's dedicated just for the photography side of things. And now my other computers upstairs, yeah, that's the one we search the web with and play games with. And of course, my phones. That's what I use to play games with. So that's a recommendation. You know, dedicate your computer, build it if you are able to do so, so that it can handle uh, the yeah, the high um, resources usage of uh, your computers by the newer superpower applications. Just like I show you generating images and things like that. That takes a lot of power. It takes a lot of resources. You better have a lot of RAM. You better have a high power processor and a really, really good graphic card. Okay. And of course, an SSD drive with a high ability for data transfer. Okay super high data transfer. I'm not an expert in that. There's people that will, will laugh at me when I talk, you know, and along those lines, you know, but that's what you really need if you're going to get into this because it seems that every new application is more of a resource hog, okay? Yeah, that's just the way it is. The more you update, the higher the demand by the applications becomes. It seems that way. You just really cannot keep up easily. All right. What happened? Wait, 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 wait. I don't want to do that. I have some uh, maintenance applications that keep popping up. David Meyer, thank you so much, my friend. Wow, appreciate it. My wife is going to go crazy when I tell her what you guys have done for me today. Thank you so much. All right, so, ha. Here is going to be a rather interesting demonstration. Now, the person that was talking about the magnets and also using uh, possibility of using a different type of material and a solvent ink printer, because apparently they noticed that moisture was causing the ink to smear after, even after it dried. And I'm going, really? I haven't seen that except maybe on plain paper. I could take, say, something I print on plain paper, hold it under the faucet. It takes, it has to get soaked before it begins to wick away. But let's do that with a photograph. So what did I show you earlier? So this one here. See, I got some water right here, and I got some paper towels. In a better situation, I would have a tray of water and I'd be able to, to show you, but I'm going to go ahead and soak this. I think I, I, I soaked my cartridge just a little bit. I'm going to soak this pretty well. So let me see if I can dribble some water here. There you go. You can see the water dribbling. Okay, so let's go ahead and rub the surface. Oh, I got some water on my print. Let's go ahead and rub this down. This is not OEM ink. This is third party. Actually, no, it is OEM ink. This is the 8550. And I believe they were talking also about OEM ink. So you see, this is luster paper. Absolutely nothing coming off. In fact, it's so good that I once had something, I think it was something like sugary and sticky, like I was eating a candy bar or something. Didn't notice my, my fingers were full of that stuff, and I accidentally rubbed it over the surface of the print. I literally actually ran it under the faucet, and that's it, and then I let it dry. Okay, you might say, well, wait a minute, maybe some other type of, maybe it's because that has been sitting 
drying for quite a bit. Let's see if any of that ink is going to come off of this paper. I just printed this. I hate to do this, but we'll just do the corner here. A little bit. You see that? A tiny little bit. So once it dries, you're not going to get any ink, as you saw. But you don't see the ink running and smearing or, or anything of the sort. What I'm doing here is 50 times more than what people are complaining about. Okay? I'm actually attempting to smear that ink. And I could see a little bit of smearing. But I just printed this. Of course. Of course. What about matte paper? So let's go ahead and do this print right here. We'll sacrifice this one here. I don't want to install that for a while. Jeez. It's always wanting me to install that for a moment. Let's go to a deeply dense area. This is matte. And see what happens. It could be the paper type. Again, this is more exposure to, mo to moisture than anything you will ever encounter. La -da 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 -da. Let me try a clean area so I can show you. I'll rub it, rub it, rub it. And you can see a little bit, okay? And that's expected, of course. This is dye ink, okay? So even with dye ink. But it's not like the print is ruined, okay? You see what I'm saying? So obviously you do not want to do that too often, okay? You don't want to do that too often. But today's inks literally can withstand that type of punishment. But again, like I said, this is you're not going to do that. It's an accident. Say you spill a little bit of water, blot it really carefully, and allow it to dry. Don't let it sit there with a wet, you know, the surface completely soaked in wet. You take this. This is, has some water on it, and and dry it. Don't rub it like I just did. Dry it. This is RC paper. It's done. It's not going to internally become wet. The RC coating prevents that from happening. You watch. Watch this. I, let me see. Do I finish everything? Everything is dry. Look at that. No damage whatsoever. So again, it depends on the paper. An RC type paper, like a Burrito paper, yeah. That would probably be affected because... There's no coating preventing moisture from entering those types of papers. Yeah, the water will go right into the paper fibers, and you could have some smearing of ink. Okay, It's not impermeable. It can be affected by water. But just because you have slightly moisty, you know, maybe your fingers are sweaty a little, no, that's not going to really cause a problem. Unless the paper is so susceptible to that. Most photographic paper, this type of paper, resin coated, you go ahead and print on it. You can handle it immediately without any issues as soon as it comes out of the printer. That's not going to get affected. Even the one I just printed, you have to really abuse it to be able to uh, cause any actual damage, which is a wet area right here. Remember, I smeared it in this direction, so... If any of the ink wicked off, you would be able to see it on the white border, but you did not. So, and this is on, that's not considered a professional printer. So, all right, folks, I think that is all I have to cover today, which is awesome. And I do truly, truly appreciate your support. It's just unbelievable. I, I don't know what to say. But I do appreciate it. That'll really make up for this week. Uh, I'm, I'm telling you, it, it's it's awesome. So thank you so much again. That that 
income is going to be used for purchasing papers. I'm looking at something from Red River that I want to purchase and demonstrate for you guys. And hopefully I'll be able to contact Drew Hendricks and see what the heck is going on. Because if that was active, oh, I wouldn't have to worry about this. I guarantee you. Oh, a new printer came out. We'll just use that money to purchase it and demonstrate the hell out of it before you guys go waste that money, hard-earned money to buy it, only to find out that maybe it's not the, the right printer for you. See, we'd be able to do that. And then if it turns out to be a dud, I sell it to someone for less than I paid for. It's always a write-off anyway when it comes to tax time. But, you know, since this is a business that we are running here, so, um, yeah, it's, it's not an issue. So once that gets ironed out and it begins to actually work, then we don't have to worry about so much about getting super chats and some of the type of funding because YouTube is just not enough to cover the work that people people expect us to be able to provide. Even, even Mike Lee, I have brought his company up to the level that he is now simply by what he gave me some inks i tested those inks i reported on those inks i gave my truth my truthfully honest report and guess what happens he became the number literally the number one ink provider in the country not volume wise but the the amount of trust that people have given him and I think I was very instrumental in that. And I didn't do it on purpose. I did it only because it deserved to be told to people. So thank you. Thank you so much. So I guess it's time to say bye-bye until next week. Let me go ahead and find us a different uh, slideshow. Let me show you. We're, we're going to be going to this place. Uh, the Thanksgiving weekend after Black Friday. Actually, on Black Friday, we're going to go with our son again. Uh, I let him do all the driving. I pay for the hotel, and he does the driving. We're going to go to uh, Harper's Ferry, West Virginia, and then we're going to go to Antietam Battlefield. So take, of course, who? Nathan with us, and he will have a blast. He enjoys the hotel room more than anything else. But in Harper's Ferry, we're going to walk across the railroad bridge, which walks you from West Virginia into maryland all you got to do is cross the potomac river so he's not going to believe that we can actually walk from one state to the other that's going to be the trick to get him to do this and he's a train lover anyway as i am as well and so we'll have a great time and then we're going to go to antietam battlefield where this next slideshow is from all right thank you so much we will see you again next week everybody have a wonderful week and a wonderful thanksgiving Bye-bye, everyone. And take advantage of those Black Friday deals, okay? Especially since you really don't have to go to the stores anymore. You can do it online. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone.